Okay, uh, good evening, Viva. This is Vipa Life, and uh, today we are going to be talking legislation and leadership in Tanchen Kanke and Kanan Federal Constituency. My name is Long Gupta. I will be your host for today. I just to let you know that I have uh, a very important person to discuss this issue with me. There's no other person but the Right Honorable Yusuf Adamu Gabti. Some people add the name Baboyo again in his name. Uh, he's the Denmark in Kanam and the Denmark in Jai. He's currently the member representing Fashika uh, Kanam. He's going to be our guest for tonight. And um, Zoom. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we're going to be discussing legislation and leadership in these three years administration. In his three years in office, what happened? So uh, let me just quickly flash to my uh, guest. Right now, who are the member of your party? Well done, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, my brother. brother. Thank, Thank you, you, viewers and listeners. Yes. yes. So, so let, let me just set the ball rolling. Right for right three years in office. How, how far? What next? If I am asked ask always mm -hmm. to, to speak, speak about, about three years in office, office it's, it's difficult. difficult. It's, it's a university, university that, that I will not get, get the experience in any classroom. classroom. Rather, Rather through, through, through the, the privileges, privileges that, that the people of Panshin Kanke Kanan Federal Constituency have done to me. It's, it's quite, quite an, an interesting experience. experience. And, and to crown it all, I, I give God, God the glory for giving me the enabling to do the, do the best, best I can do. And I thank most especially the people for giving me the platform to discharge and display some of the qualities that I think I have. Okay, so, so uh, three years, the legislator is first serving the responsibility of making laws for the betterment of the country. Let's start from there. Your first cardinal principle, your prime uh, reason for being in the house. Laws, let's talk about legislation. How far, Honorable Gandhi? Yes, uh, like it is in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, where every parliament legislator is elected with the primary responsibility of discharging a unique function. And that function, stipulated clearly in the Constitution, is parliament, legislators are expected to make laws for peace, to make laws for order, and to make laws for good governance. In addition to discharging another responsibility of oversighting ministries, agencies, and departments of government, be it federal, state, or local government. In the case of local government, the councillors, in the case of state, members of the state houses of assembly, in the case of the national, that is federal, members of the bicameral system of legislators who are the House of Representatives as well as the senators. In discharging my own, I have tried my best and I have also always mentioned it in any opportunity I, I am given to express whether I have done well regarding to my constitutional responsibilities. Yes, I have said that in my life, three years in the National Assembly, I have sponsored the 22 number of bills. And in those 22 number of bills, they are at various stages. Some of them have passed first reading. Most of them have passed second reading. And few of them have gotten the blessings of both the House of Representatives and the Senate. And equally few of them have received the blessings of Mr. President by ascending to those bills. What are the ones that are successful? Yes, one is the Police Total Refill and Reenactment Bill, which is now an act that is called Police Act of 2020. This is the first piece of legislature single-handedly sponsored by myself without any co-sponsor in the National Assembly. I first look at what is happening to Nigeria and what is happening to Plato State. Being a member, former member of the State House of Assembly that was privileged to chair a security and peace committee in the state, I know purification of arms and ammunition. I know cries of abuse of fundamental human rights of citizens of Plato State. I know suffocation in women trying to attend to the position of Inspector General of Police, but it's never been. I know how our policing system is, whether it is intelligent-led and whether it is community participatory or not. That was what instigated me to first say 
that my first assignment in the National Assembly is to ensure a total repeal and reenactment of Police Act 2020. And by the special grace of God, I did that. Adjusted various sections in the existing Police Act of 2004 that could not address some fundamental human rights issues. And to God be the glory, the NSA has exonerated my commitment toward ensuring that the Police Act 2020 have come to be. Yes, the aspect of community policing, which here to this moment is not embedded in the Police Act. I said, if we want peace, and we want a lot of issues going on between the citizens and the police system in Nigeria, it must be community participatory, where you have the community policing. The community will own the police, share intelligence between them and the regular police. And that community policing aspect of Police Act 2020 donated some powers to our traditional institution where there are various committees of the policing at all levels. You have the community policing committee at the local level, you have it at the House of Representatives level, you have it at the senatorial district level, and you have it at the state level. The chairman of community policing of each state of the federation is co-chaired by the paramount ruler of that particular state, Bongom just in the case of Plato, Amia of Kano in the case of Kano, and many other states. They are co-function with the commissioner of police in that state. That shows that issue of fundamental human rights abuses will be addressed. That equally shows that intelligence, information, generated by citizens will be cross-checked between the citizens and the police. This is one of the fundamental achievements. And to what be the glory, Mr. President signed that bill on the 16th of September, 2020, courtesy Honorable Yusuf Adamugadi of the people of Panshinkanke Kanan Federal Constituency. The second one that scaled through is the bill, which is now an act, establishing the Federal University of Education Panshinkanke. Yes, I have done my best in ensuring that I have equally promoted my alma mater. I finished from FCE Panshin before moving here to University of Jos. I read social studies double major. I left FCE Panshin in 2003-2004. Then, as an alma mater of that institution, I have looked at the structure of that institution. I have looked at the conduciveness of learning in that institution. And I've looked at the need for us to strengthen our educational system by providing advanced teaching and learning process. I frequently look at what is the way through piece of legislation will I do to promote the physical infrastructure, physical infrastructural, physical infrastructural visibility within the four angles of my constituency. I say promoting and advancing the status of that teacher training institute to a degree teacher training institute by making it a federal university of education could be one of the responsibilities. It's one of my difficult experience in life. I pulled that and got to God be the glory, Mr. President ascended to that bill. We just last eight days ago presented the official gazette establishing that institution to the management of the then Federal College of Education function. The process of implementation, I think, have commenced in the Federal Ministry of Education and by the special grace of God, I am one proud son of the people of Panshinkanke Kanan Federal Constituency that have bring another federal university to the people of Plato in addition to University of Jos, the famous University of Jos. The third bill that received the assent of Mr. President is the National Hydrographic Agency. I have said elsewhere in the media that just like you have the road safety, just like you have the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, that look at where there are potholes to maintain them, that give information to commuters to know which road is good and which road is not good, that regulate rules and regulations governing transport system, the major means of transportation of goods and services aside of the air, I think is transport by sea, where you have goods, where you have containers in numbers, flying into one country or another. The ships that fly, fly those roads, particularly fly those water, particularly within the Gulf of Guinea, equally require nautical information to know where they follow and where not to follow.
to know where there are rigs that can risk the life of their platform and whether they should avoid that road to be able to get to their destination. To be for Nigeria, to champion, to be one of the strongest nations in the, in the Gulf of Guinea based on the strength of our Navy, based on the strength of our port authority, based on the strength of Nimasa, based on the strength of our water, based on the ports we have, based on our role in African transaction within our waterways. For us not to have a hydrographic agency, that would have been a big indictment in the face of Nigeria. And having Mr. President purchased a platform to the Nigerian Navy, the biggest hydrographic ship in the whole of Africa, then Nigeria deserves to have hydrographic agencies. It's my best bill that I instigated it from a clean clean sheet to jotting, to looking for information, to looking for related piece of legislation around the globe, to packaging it and adjusting it within the, the, the convenience of Nigeria. I have done that. And Mr. President, looking at the merit of that bill, it's my third bill that was signed. My fourth bill that was taken to Mr. President is a bill for an act to establish the uh, Maritime Security Trust Fund, a trust fund made to augment the suffering of the Nigerian Navy. With some little adjustment, Mr. President declined assent, but did not decline assent that he was not going to sign. He made observation to the National Assembly through the Attorney General and Minister for Justice of the Federation, and that fourth bill was returned to the National Assembly for us to make sure that all those amendments, all the observation of Mr. President was considered, then we take it back to him. The fifth bill that is equally on its way to the President to sign is a bill for an act to establish Admiralty University in Delta Igosa. That equally is a Navy University. Being a chairman of one of an armed force committee, the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, being the chairman of Navy, I equally feel that if I have satisfied my conscience, in times of providing piece of legislation that does not only have direct impact to the people of Nigeria, but specifically to the people of Panjim Kanke Kanam, Federal Constituency, Plateau and Nigeria, the Federal University of Education, there is equally a need for me to push that piece of legislation that will add value to the agency that I superintend, to the agency that I am by privilege the chairman of that agency, which is Navy and establishing that Admiralty University will mean that in addition to Army University in Biu, Borno State, we will have an Admiralty University in Delta Ibosa, meaning there will be two existing military university that is established by the provision of an act of the National Assembly, if at the end of the day it is signed by Mr. President. These five bills, I am expect, it is expected, the sixth one, which is equally expected to reach Mr. Bryce President, is that of relocating the existing Federal College of Education pension to Federal College of Education Dengue, Canada. This is a fit bill that by the special grace of God, I think I will try my best before the end of my tenure in office as a member of the Ninth House of Representatives. I will do all my best within my powers to ensure that seven bills, six I have mentioned, the eighth is equally providing a legal framework for Federal Technical Polytechnic NIAC in Shandam. By the special grace of God, those six, seven pieces of legislation, I will robustly pursue them, and I will be proud, even as it is now, I am proud, to be the only legislator at the risk of sounding very immodest, that in within one legislative session, Mr. President has signed three of his bills, which never happened in the history of National Assembly. And to do some, I think I must have broken the, the, the Guinness Book of Records. Exactly. I wanted to ask you if, uh, how you feel and how many, you know, we have uh, the members of, you are not the only member there, but you were able to pull seven years. And I wanted to ask you if you feel proud when you have answered that. So let's, let's also go to the legislative plus. Uh, there's something they call the legislative plus. Well, the legislators in Nigeria do make bills, but the legislative plus is when you make water and water to other people. But apparently, that will say it's not your uh, mandate. So let's go to your legislative plus. Uh, how far? We know about the water. You know, but can you give us more light about it well, than others that you have? 
Well, in addition to my constitutional duties, as put together, as I have explained, which I forgot one, the oversight, I am a chairman of a committee that every quarter of a year I visit all naval base commands and headquarters across the Federation. I go around top states in every three months to make sure that budgetary provision made to the agency is being used the way it's supposed to be used. And I have a quarterly report of my oversight function, which constitution also asks the parliament to do that. Then legislative clause, that is in addition to those constitutional duties, what other additional duty that is not the prerogative of myself as a parliament that I have discharged? Yes, I have prognosed into executive responsibility where I feel if the primary purpose of government is to make laws for peace, order, and good governance, that is that of legislature. And the primary purpose of government is to protect the life of the citizen in addition to ensuring the welfare of the people. Then that plus, that additional responsibility is equally constitutional. Governance, when you mention governance, you are talking about the, 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 the parliament, the democratic trinity, that is the senate, or the parliament, the executive, as well as the judiciary. These are the three tiers of government. And this is what we call democratic trinity. Just like you say, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Why it is called democratic trinity? Because they have equal responsibility. They have equal powers. No arm of government seems to be ahead of the other. Although to be sentimental and selfish, if the constitution is to mention the three arms of government anywhere, it says the legislator first, then the executive and the judiciary. Legislator being the brain box of democracy. And that is why if there is military intervention, the first arm of government to be suspended is the legislative arm of government, being a front, being a bedrock within which democracy stands on. So if I am talking about equality of powers of the three arms of government in times of legislative democratic trinity, I'm equally selfish to say that I think the legislature comes first, looking at the important and role in a democratic setting. I have done those legislative plus by providing water to the people. I will mention the other achievements I have done in addition to lawmaking to you, sector by sector. If you are talking about capital project, yes, water is one. Having put together a committee before my coming into the House of Representatives called a blueprint committee, in addition to a local committee I have put at the ward level that should go and identify area of needs of the people I represent. I come to the constituency headquarter level to put together a high power committee that will collect report from those local committees I have put in place to identify the needs of 36 federal ward that I represent in the three local government. The committee was headed by the John Gobak MNI with some responsible members of Panshinkanke Kanam Federal Constituency as members. They harmonized the area of needs that was put together by those local committee to a blueprint, and the blueprint was presented to me. It means, therefore, that if the committee have said you have a constitutional role of making peace of legislation for peace, order, and good governance, in addition to the discharge of oversight responsibility, they have equally reminded me of you need to add value to the people by lobbying for one or two projects to be situated within those constituencies. I say water is one of the primary needs of the people based on the document I received called my legislative proof blueprint. I decided to personally, I say personally, and I repeat personally, purchase a rig, Indian rig, the one of the biggest Indian rig in Nigeria that can drill rocky area and that they can, can also have a machine to be manipulated, to be swapped, to drill in a moody area. I bought that brand new, imported it to Nigeria, and set in a team of experts to be able to provide water to the 354 or 57 pooling units in Panshinkanke Kanan Federal Constituency. That I have done. We have started the production, or the drilling of those water, in the 357 pooling units, and as of today, 
We have done 194 or 97, 97 so far. We have provided water in 197 pooling units in, um, in the three local governments that make up the Panjshin Kanke Kanam Federal Constituency. I am fulfilled even if I stop here. By the way, we just suspended activities because the rain is too much. The water level have come up. I wouldn't want to drill a water that is not going to be sustained during the dry season to this community. The best time to make to drill to provide water for people is maybe in the month of February, March, April, where the water level have gone deep. And where if you drill and get water, it will be sustained even if rain comes or there is no rain. By the time the water level goes down, those bubbles are going to be sustained. That the, the among the 197 pooling units, I think about 110 borehole installations was done successfully. I am intended to, when within the end of next month or first, this month or first week of next month, when I am presenting the second phase of check for the refund of WAEC, I have refund NECO and I have equally paid the NECO fee. I have refunded JAM last year. I intend to produce another check of 100 million to the committee headed by John Gobak, my advisory committee, to give the subcommittee and ensure the refund of JAM fee for this year, as well as WAEC fee for this year that students have already paid before we commend payment of NEPO. During the presentation of that check, I will present another check of 100 million to the technical committee that have drilled this borehole so that they will procure the additional accessories to ensure that the 197 borehole drill have been installed will be should be installed successfully before rainy season end so that community will benefit start benefiting from that gesture and so that if rain ends will equally commence the next phase of ensuring that the 357 unit gets born. That is my covenant with God, and that is my agreement with the people of Panshin Kanke Kanam Federal Constitution. That I'm doing it personally, not from any ministry, department, or agency of government. We will produce that by the special grace of God. We will fulfill that those covenants. I have constructed about 14 kilometer road in Canada, 13 point something kilometer. Because we had five kilometer road abandoned by the previous administration, I said it. Yes, it is by the previous administration. And now that I have come on board, I have decided to look within my resources to ensure that can a local government that have no tar road have befitting tar road. And we have concluded about 13 point something kilometer road within Dengue Metropolis. We will soon commence. We are doing another road construction in Gum to, Gua, to Guaman and perhaps to Dogonrua. We will soon commence that of uh, uh, Shuer to Dokpai. Very soon we will commence that and we will finish that of. Uh, we have done some metropolitan route in Panshin uh, from the Panshin ancient city up to the prison service area. We'll soon commence that of the, the, the Panshin Daily Market and, and, and all the roads within the Panshin ancient city, plus the six roads within the new layout. The one to road, one or two or three within the new layout, and the road that passed before the youth center in Panshin local government. We will definitely do this before the end of our First, before the end of our four years in office, and determined to do that. In addition to this, we have 22 district heads in Panshinkan Ekana Federal Constituency. And as it is, we have built 15 palaces, plus offices, plus four toilets, plus additional befitting office for the district head, plus the district head palace, a project that was 48 million per one. We have, we have done, done 16 to 16 districts in Panshinkaike Panshin Canal Federal Constituency. And the other remaining six are equally ongoing. It therefore means that before the end of our first 
four years in office by the special grace of God, we will have achieved in providing a modern befitting district head office to our district head people in Panshim Kanke Canal Federal Constituency that we have not had and we have not seen anywhere. I have not seen a district head office that is as befitting as that of the people of Panshim Kanke Canal Federal Constituency. We are doing more. There are town halls that we have been that are being ongoing. There are youth centers that are ongoing. There are befitting modern primary health care with modern equipment. We have finished five. We are laying foundation for additional five by the special grace of God before the end of the year. It means, therefore, that we have taught education. It means, therefore, that we have taught transportation. It means we have taught law. It means we have constructed schools in the area of schools. It's not even three classroom blocks that we are providing these days. We are providing six classroom blocks to the people of Panshin Kanche Kanan Federal Constituency. We have completed the one in Langshi. We have completed one in Dagdi. We have completed one in Nemel. We have completed one in Dongu. We have completed one in, 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 in so many places of, of Panshin Kanke Kanan Federal Constituency in the area of educational infrastructure. We have done that. We have purchased computers and office equipment, including office table and chairs, to about 28 secondary schools in Panshin Kanke Kanan Federal Constituency. Committee will soon go around those institutions to make sure that those furniture, uh, offices of our principal and teachers are furnished across the 28 uh, secondary schools within the constituency. We have done a lot. We have done what we think we can do. This is in addition to human capital development, empowerment program of different status. We have done different empowerment programs. One was on the 12th or 14th of February 2020 at Youth Center Function, where we distributed fertilizers, where we distributed pesticide, where we distributed insecticide, where we distributed money by empowering the citizens of Panshin Kanke Kanan Federal Constituency, where we distributed a lot of equipment. We distributed a water pumping machine that, that for, for, for irrigation, irrigation farming, for dry season farming to farmers across the three local governments. This again is in addition to other empowerment programs that we have called people to give them motorcycle. We have done five different empowerment for motorcycle. As it is, I have distributed as a member representing Panshin Kanke Kanan 861 motorcycles so far. And by the special grace of God, I will do over 1,500 before the end of my four years in office. I am determined to do that. So far, I have distributed 81 cars to the citizens of Panshin Kanke Kanan Federal Constituency. I have done that to Jamaat Nasrul Islam in Panshin, in Kanke, in Kanan. I've given bicycle to the Khan in Panshin, in Kanke, in Kanam. I have given bicycle to the divisional police officers, ELOX, in Panshin, in Kanke, in Kanam. I have done that. It means, therefore, in the area of security, too, we have done the legislative plan plus. We have done the legislative plan plus to the people. We will continue to do that. We will continue to add value to the people of Panshin Kanke Kanan Federal Constituency. I'm not even in a better position to tell you what we have done. But I assure listeners, viewers, including journalists like you, that before the next two months, three, we are going to commission the compendium of what we have done in the last three and a half years for history to be kind with us. We will mention the names and mention the list of capital projects we have executed the one that is as a result of our lobbying power to government and the one that is as a result of humanitarian nature to ensure we have added value personally to the people we represent. Having mentioned them in that particular scorecard we are going to commission, we will give you the picture of the project and the location of the project and the telephone number of leader of that community so that you don't need to disturb yourself. You only need to open that compodium 
and call the person that is there or call anybody you know within that community to snap the picture of that project and send to you so that you equally compare it with what you have. You equally compare it with what you have in our own blueprint. So we continue to do our best. We are giving employment to citizens. In military, in the armed forces, the army, the navy, and the air force, Yusuf Gagdi have instigated the recruitment of over 196 citizens of Plateau State. Among the 196, this is not in addition to officers. This is recruit. In the area of officers, producing officers that will be general admirals in the navy, that will be generals in the army, that will be uh, whatever in the air force. I have to make sure that in the official recruitment of those people, we have equally make sure that 21 citizens of Panshin Kanke Kanam have been, have been enrolled as officers within the Nigerian Navy, Nigerian Army, that is the, 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 the NDA and other institutions like that. I have done my best. While in the regular civil service, we are given 443 citizens of Panshin Kanke Kanam job. That the list, when we are commissioning when our rig, when we are, we are celebrating our two years in office that Mr. Governor attended, the list was 200 plus. Today we have 442 people in the regular civil service. And we are going to update the record and equally publish it in that list of our achievements. Out of these 442, only 17 have issues. Those 17 were recruited in uh, in, 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 Federal, in Federal University last year in Nasserah State, as well as the one in Wukari, Federal University Wukari. These are the 17 that couldn't get captured. And uh, again, it's not everything you do that you get it the way you want. If I have 442 people employed as a result of my effort in Plateau, and only 17 have problem, I think we have achieved more than the expectation of a lot of people that think we could achieve in that particular sector. So this is the brief of what I can remember because of the impromptu engagement with you. In the course of the interaction, if I'm able to remember so many, I will mention so many. Okay, right now, you, you, you spoke about a lot of things. And you know, one would be desperate to ask you, are you the only member? You know, I haven't done all this. I actually, I don't remember. Or where do you get this money from? People have already, have already been asking, and I've been pushed. Anytime I have the opportunity to engage press, they will be able to push me to make comparison between me and members of the National Assembly. And I refuse to be carried away to compare myself with anybody. Everybody has his own law. We have our different hearts. Some have the good heart to invest their personal resources to the people. Some have the good heart, but again, to invest that one that meant for the people. The one that is their own is their own. But I feel in my thinking, the easiest way for me to get salvation and the pleasure of God is to invest in humanity, is to show love to humanity. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Again, I'm not expecting anybody to feel that there is a need for him to compare me with anybody. Legislative responsibility and governance. One, yes, there is preparedness of the person you are electing. Is he well organized and prepared to confront those issues the way they are? Or he is coming there as a privilege, a goodwill of the people alone, calling himself a legislator. Again, there is a lock of, some people are lucky. If you get to the National Assembly, you get the desired connection, and you do what you are doing. But prior to my going to National Assembly, I am who I am. You had engaged me in the Plateau State of House of Assembly when I was a deputy speaker. You had equally engaged me when I was an ordinary member, flow member in the Plateau State House of Assembly. I have been discharging my goodwill to even my colleagues and to the people I represent at the state level. If I have that kind gesture, that I take what belongs to me to invest in the system at the, at the state level, and I am expanding that today, it means that my humanitarian nature, my being multi-humanist, 
does not start today. It starts long before today. And I think I'm comfortable and convenient doing that, servicing humanity, committing humanity, discharging my resources for humanity as to where I get those resources. I know people that know me know. People that doesn't know me don't know. Some of your colleagues, last two years, I deliberately took them to my farm. When I said it in the media yesterday that I'm the biggest farmer in Plato, some people called me and they were shocked and surprised. It's only when you talk about what you do that people envy you and have problem with you. But when you are quiet and achieve, let them see the achievement, but let them not see how you get to achieve what you have achieved. That has been my strategy. I told people yesterday in the radio program, I relocate most of the time from Abuja to my farm. Uh, <laughs> at times by road, at times by, I have a helicopter landing path in the farm. I land there, I stay in my farm, Look at what I am doing, 100 and almost 47 hectares. That is the measurement of my farm. And there is no one single hectare that I don't plant one form of crop or another. In I have 372 cows on the farm. I'm not a fly anymore. I'm Jara from Kanam local government area of Plato. I'm from Wum. I'm a native of Plato, but I venture into cattle rather. They are set there. I go, I see them. In the year, I, my, the, 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 the rice I produce, over 4,600 bags of last year, I have not even processed it. It is in the warehouses there. I have eight warehouses in the farm that I store my farm produce. Then I have a farmhouse befitting that I go and sleep and snow. And I get peas working on the farm. At the time, I climb a, a tractor and flow the farm myself. I have four tractors in my farm, not meant for getting money, but you know, to, to be able to process 147 hectares of land, you need those equipments to do what you are doing. This is in addition to my private businesses that I have drawn from them being a public office holder. Is it mining? Is it importations of a lot of things? Partnership with some of my Chinese partners that you see us today with the Mbalo and what have you, you will think they are investors. Some doesn't know who are the brain behind these people that are doing those things. Either they are running some of our businesses or what have you. But you don't talk to people, no matter how they push you. Some have said that it is a fictitious money. The source is fictitious. There is a cultism. Some, Some have said that we trade people's head. We cut, we buy people's head to sell. I have heard that. From 2008, that I contested the House of Assembly election against 2011 election, there is nothing that this my ear did not hear. But I remain focused. Some have said that he's a Muslim. You always see him go to Umrah, Saudi Arabia. He's being sponsored by Islamic country. I don't know how people think in your wildest in your imagination. How could just another country decide to identify Yusuf Gaddi in Plato? Maybe because, according to those conspiracy theories, they don't like Plato and they begin to pump money for you to Islamize Plato. It, it, it sounds like the person saying that is sick. How do you Islamize a state? How many people have I Islamized in the state assembly? How many people have I converted? To, to, to Islam. Islam. I have I a Christian wife. wife. I have, I have never, never sent her to any church to campaign for me. I have never, never used her in any political gathering to get sympathy of Christian. Christian. My, my family, family is my family. family. I have a daughter, daughter, I have a son with a Christian mother. Christian. I have two, two daughters, daughters from a Christian, Christian mother. mother. Out, Out of my six kids, three, three. three. I'm from a Christian mother, three from a Muslim mother. And yet, I did, I did not convert, convert her into, into Islam. Islam. It, it is, is the, the plan, plan, people of Plato or Panjshinkanke that, that I want, I want to convert, convert into Islam because Islamic, Islamic country gives you money. Because, because uh, of, of sentiment, sentiment of religion, religion Gandhi is being treated specially. It is very unfortunate that we think the way we think. But again, I tell you that God knows where I get my money. And God knows that they are clean and genuine. And may God forgive those people putting together those conspiracy theories. Okay, well, let me say amen to that. Uh, right or wrong, how do you feel? You not know, spoke. How do you feel if you are misquoted or misrepresented? You feel, naturally, you feel bad. But the good news, you, you, 
Naturally, I used to feel bad. I, when I was in the state assembly, before coming to state assembly, I used to have sleepless nights. Why are people seeing you with cars? 406. I used to do convoy of 406 was just like a land cruiser in 2008. I used to parade eight brand new 406 to Canada to campaign within the within the, the, the shows of uh, Cantana state constituency. People will call you a 409. From 2008 that you contest election that you are doing what you are doing up to now, nobody comes out to arrest you that you have duped him. Again, they will say that you are trading with baby's head in the boot of your car. Those are irritating statements that I used to feel bad, but now I don't feel bad. You know why? They have developed me to take those rot from them. But My skin are thick. Since you don't feel bad, yes. let me just pose another one for you. You know, uh, you talk about a radio interview. And in that particular radio interview, the reporters are saying that you know the gubernatorial aspirant of the APC, Dr. Nantawe, as far back as 2019. Now, pundits um, are saying that you, uh, that, 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 that there's a level of impartiality, you know, that the right is supposed to maintain us on that time. So, moral questions are coming on board. Let, what do you think about it's not more it's not it's not moral question let me correct you i i was not misquoted but it's politic i said that but it's political questions that are coming up they are not moral questions if i said in the media my radio program that i know nentawe i know him before 2008 and my relationship with him politically come close in 2008 it doesn't mean that I, uh, people will induct him morally that he was supposed to maintain neutrality campaign. Yes, he was supposed to maintain neutrality campaign. But people should ask the foundation of Dr. Nentawe. Who was he before his appointment as a resident electoral officer? Dr. Nentawe had his own political views, political perspective. He may not have been a card carrying member of any political party. But just like any other Nigerian have right to have his own political thinking, how I wish this individual have interest in certain personalities. He do have. And he have like minds that they think together. Then in 2018, if the entire have people that when he was a lecturer, he used to think politics with them in Kanke and take decisions. And he decided to donate those people to me as someone that is supposed to maintain neutrality campaign, and I enjoy the goodwills of those people. Why wouldn't I not attribute those, uh, those, uh, those goodwills that I had benefited in 2008 to him? Without him, and without organizing those people together, particularly as a lecturer, not a cat carrying member of a political party, I wouldn't have benefited the goodwill of someone like Kevin Panshin. I wouldn't have benefited the goodwill of someone like the chairman of Panshin, former chairman of Panshin local government. I wouldn't have benefited the goodwill of people like a lot of people that were people that believe in him and ask him constantly, irrespective of political platform, what do we do? Now, he, he, he donated those people to me and I benefited from their goodwill. I shouldn't mention even the chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission, Commission was a lecturer before. He had goodwill. He had people that he advised in this politics, this candidate is the best. What if a politician benefits from that goodwill? Does that amount to him being impartial? The impartiality of resident electoral commissioner or any INEC officer doesn't mean that he doesn't have a past people that they think together and one person cannot capitalize on that particular thinking together to get a political privileges out of it. His impartiality should be displayed during counting of votes, during conduct of election, by not being a card carrying member of a party, by not attending campaign rally, but again, his freedom to movement and association was not restricted. Because I was APC, I shouldn't move in the same car with him in 2008, is that what those political it's not moral question say political questions are coming up and those political questions i'm not worried about that if you have not asked i don't think those things are things that people should even uh, respond to they are adding more popularity to dr nentawe and they are scared because they know 
by God's grace, Nentawe is going to defeat them. So they don't have any attribute from their own candidate to showcase him to the people of Plato. The only thing they have strength to display is to continue to instigate propaganda of that nature. Well, Let me ask the political question again. Many people are very angry in the role that you played in the APC primaries. Some feel as if you skimmed them out. How? Some feel as if you even skimmed their enemy group out completely. Because you are very influential and you are close to the governor and they are, what is it called, anointed. Let me give you. Let me give you a political answer. But to the tribes that things I excluded them, that thing which I had never do, and to the people that think I didn't do their bidding, if I had supported their candidate, they wouldn't have been saying what they are saying. But because I didn't go their own way, they are saying what they are saying. That shows and tells you how political those things are. But to correct an impression, I don't think one person can make, can influence the decision of government or decision of the people in APC to support a particular person. I have said it. For Nentawe to be displaying the agenda he has for Plato the way he is doing. If you, anyone thinks within his wildest imagination that the man just make up his mind to be governor just recently, he is flogging a dead horse. For you to listen to Nentawe once, Dr. Nentawe once, the candidates and the standard bearer of APC. You know that some, it's someone that has been putting his head together to take leadership in Plato State. It's not a responsibility or commitment of one person. Ask yourself this question. Among all the aspirants, let me be political too, for the first time, who is the aspirant that reached out to four angles of Plato, like Dr. Nentao Yilwa, that I know no one? It's not just about Nentao, including senatorial seats in the central zone. That, 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 but again, if you meet other people, they will tell you even the senatorial candidate has complained to them that I don't like him. I have had people that confronted me to say that even the senatorial candidate of APC you are talking about, the, the, the Honorable Decade Plan, have complained to people. People have approached me with this that I don't like him. And again, other people are telling you that I influence his comment. It tells you how inconvenient people are feeling about some of us. And it's not because of anything. It's because of the achievement I have just summarized to you now as a result of my interaction with you. People feel unsafe. People feel very, very uncomfortable. And therefore, anything bad, they must try to relate you to it so that the echo of your name, the volume of your name, the way it's echo, they will tune it down. Unfortunately, it is not me and you and them that make that the who he is. It is no body in Plato that make me who I am. It is God Almighty. The only person that will reduce my speed limit is God Almighty, not human being. So when people attribute the fact that technically, I have technically aged their tribe, technically, I have influenced Nentawe or whosoever. I didn't, but I know I play my role as someone that believes in him and someone that I will say without any fear of contradiction, doing him what he do me. Yes. So, is this me, me, this is your work, do me, I do you, right? Uh, the was also brought out a word for you. It's called Chamlock. I don't know if you had Chamlock Lock before. I have. You had, you understood the meaning of Chamlock Lock. I understood. I asked and it was explained to me. Yeah. But what, 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 what tribe are you? Okay. But do you, is there anything like Chamlock Lock in your tribe? No. Is there any statement that sounds Chamlock Lock? Okay. So, 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 you are from PKK. Yes. You have a tribe that doesn't know what Chamlock Lock is all about. I am German from Plato. Jar people doesn't know what Chamlock Lock in Canada is all about. Uh, there is Bogoman in Canada. He doesn't know what Chamlock Lock is all about. There is Kadum Kangshu Man. He doesn't understand what Chamlock Lock. There is someone from Dog Pai. He doesn't understand Chamlock Lock. There is Talman. He doesn't know Chamlock Lock. So, 
I don't know. There is chief man. He doesn't know Cham Lok Lok. Even though the chief people, because of political interest, are using Cham Lok Lok, I don't know whether all of a sudden they want to become gas. It is only someone from in gas land that will, if you say Cham Lok Lok, he understands. And PKK is beyond one tribe. It's beyond one tribe. So even if there is a conspiracy theory that was promulgated by some people to describe me as uh, test I test. That is what someone tell me the meaning of Chamlo. Do and give someone to do. Equivalent to do me, I do. Equivalent to do me, I do. Yes. So, but not in that categorical sense of it or categorical sense of it. It is in a different sense of it. So, and someone is saying Cham Kwan Kwan. Someone is saying Cham Bab Bab. Someone is saying Cham Fumi Fumi. My own is even for Bab for Bab. Oh, for kun, for kun. Go and tell them. They say chap, lock, lock, Abi. Tell them I say chap, for kun, for kun. They let them tell you the meaning of chap, for kun, for kun. It means that I may even contest if I am alive beyond 2023. Whether I lose or win, if I win, tell them, cut me, say it anywhere. It is possible in 2027 I will contest again because my chap, lock, lock is my performance and the belief between me and the electorate. Don't you think that this particular statement that I said, that's why people say you are arrogant. You are going to say, okay, you are going to be all this. But do you know what? Their judgment is none of my business. It's God's judgment. He doesn't judge me based on what they think about me. He judges me based on the intention of what I say. So is it an insult to say, to wish myself well? Is it being arrogant to say, Cham Lok Lok is only attributed to a particular tribe. Jarman doesn't understand Cham Lok Lok. Bogoman doesn't understand. Other tribe, many tribes within the PKK family. The Mupun man doesn't understand Cham Lok Lok. So many of us doesn't understand. And tell them I have said Cham Kwan Kwan O Femi Femi O For Bab For Bab. It means that do and do and do and do again and again and again. And I move further to say that it is possible that whether I win or lose, it doesn't restrict my fundamental human right of contesting in 2027. If I lose in 2023, God forbid, by the special grace of God, I will not lose. But if I lose, it doesn't stop me from buying from 2027. If I win, all of a sudden, you can't equally stop me because of Chambaba not to buy from in 2027. My own is, everything you see, it starts from somewhere. If nobody ever won second time but contested, people should not kill themselves because Gandhi is contesting again. They should allow me to contest just like Leo contested. They should allow me to contest just like Labar contested. They should allow me to contest just like Golu contested. If I contest, I fail. Heaven will not fail. Those people that contested second time and lose, they are sleeping, they are snoring, they are doing well. So. Let the people decide, and it is possible for the first time they will see Cham Bab Bab. For the first time in 2027, they may see Cham Kwan Kwan or Fir Fir or Femi Femi. Let's allow the people to be our either Cham Bab Bab or Cham Lok Lok or Cham the electorates are going to determine whether it is Lok Lok or it is for Kwan for Kun or for Bab for Bab. Well, uh, while we are being together with the right honorable Yusuf Agamegagdi, I can see many comments uh, coming. Uh, one of the comments I will take for now, I will be taking the comments more so that we can discuss part of the comment as part of feedback. Uh, I commend the member for giving good account of his stewardship. We need such people. That is from Professor Charubutu. Then we also have Chief Coptis in Banos. He's saying we have tested, verified, and satisfied right honorable Gandhi leadership, which cannot be compared, you know, or which is compared to none in PKK. Yeah. Well, this is a comment. I'm looking for a very tough one so that I can hit you. They will, you will certainly get a tough one because they are always waiting. Uh, well, uh, most of it, my yeah, honorable, without uh, equivocation, you are an unequal uh, people representative. Indeed, you, the record is the record of achievement is unmatched. More wins, right on the board. That's Austin Simon. John Parshak is also saying you have done well. Congratulations, my honourable member. Uh, why are you not hitting you? 
<laughs> you can hit me. Thank you very much. I'll start from American Lady. I'm a plateau man. And I know there was a bill regarding to the change of Barry Kenladi name only during the voting. I have a colleague in the National Assembly. And if I have a bill regarding to the establishment of Federal University of Panchi, I go to consult him and to seek for his opinion to support my bill. I see no reason why he wouldn't have informed me prior to the voting that this is the needs I want. But because that time I have not had contact with him, I'm telling my touch mind. Because I didn't know what he wanted. And because he didn't tell me whether it was his bill, because the bill came from Senate. It wasn't a bill that was sponsored by the member from Barikeladi in the House of Representatives. And if he has interest in the change of name of Barry Kinladi, nothing stops him from dialing my phone or coming to my office, just like I dial their phone and go to their offices to seek for their support. On this, they did it, and I absent. I didn't vote. If I vote yes, change the name. And he later tell me that my colleague, this is not what I want. Or I vote no, don't change the name. And I, I discharge my duties to the best of my ability. I never allow my personal interest to influence my official decision. This is the award I took. And let me tell you my personal interest at that time. It was to vote against it. You know why? Because I see what I didn't see any importance in the change of name. I didn't know why they how the name. If you ask me personally what I would have done, even if he is looking at me right now, I would have voted no, don't change the name. But officially, I don't know what my constituent would have asked me to do because I saw the thing on the day of the voting and it is greatly unfair for the senator, caught me anywhere, and the House of Representatives member representing Barry and Ladi not to intimate me on what they want on that particular piece of legislation, piece of amendment. Then why would I take decision without not meeting them? I should assume I don't assume. I don't assume. So, so on Bariki Ladi, Pajin Kankia Kanam Federal Constituency did not participate. Because, because I will not just assume that the senator of the Northern Senatorial District loved it until after the voting, before I even know that that piece of legislation was sponsored by Senate. But because we practice by a camera system of legislature, we need to concur, we need to agree in the House of Reps before it is passed. I can't fight. For the good of the people, of Panshin Kanke cannot feel their consensus because I don't know their view. On Kama, I was out of the country. Four, the takeover of NNS Lhasa, one of the biggest ships that can carry, that have 480 beds for military officers during uh, war and operation. It's equally part of my constitutional requirement. That is why people should know the work of legislators does not end in the chamber. 
Constitution say conduct oversight function. I was in the Nigeria's delegation to the United Arab Emirates with the Minister of Defense, Chief of the Naval Staff, and the Chairman Senate Committee on Navy, Chairman House Committee on Navy, to go and take over that platform to the Nigerian government. So I didn't. That is it. I will take Caesar. I've always said this. If God will use my representation of the people of Panshinkan Kekanan to determine whether I should go to heaven or hellfire, I'm assuring you and I'm assuring listeners that my room in heaven will be a presidential suit, not even single room. Because I know I have deprived myself, my family, a lot of things for the collective good of the people of Panshinkan Kekanan federal constituency. I know. I have, I have not, not used, used one naira of their own. own. Rather, I have used my own to improve the life of the people. What I needed was the flat platform. And I have gotten the platform. And I'm doing my best in that regard. Then my views when it comes to bills, whether I consult, bills that I have prior information to consult, I do. Let him ask the people of Panshinkan Kekana. Every year I do consultation. I don't call the three local government in one place. I go to each local government, I spend one week or three, four days in each local government to consult that this is what we are doing in the National Assembly. What is your abuse? That this is what I am able to do in the National Assembly. The market women, the various uh, labor unions, the political class, the elected officials, the appointees of local governments, the different political group names and chambers, the Amayasu Angwas and what have you. I try as much as possible to consult with them. Well, I don't know, you're talking about consultation. That's on the final note. You're talking about consultation. The 2023 elections is coming, fast coming. And uh, your party, the APC, have a Muslim, apply the Muslim Muslim ticket. Uh, we, we, we've had your opinion on another platform where you expressed it outrightly. I'll to ask you again for emphasis. Right? The thing has happened. What is still your position? My position is that my party did not take my opinion. And I'm not leaving my party. Because this has happened between me and my late father. About something that I wouldn't want him to do. The wedding of my marriage of my immediate younger brother. I met him in the farm. May he saw rest in peace. I left FC Panshing and I went to the farm to meet my father. He invited me. I was helping him in the farm. And we started the discussion about the wedding of my immediate young brother. I said, sir, let's not do it. He said, well, I said, the young man is not doing anything. Why is he in a hurry? He said, if I will not help my younger brother to get married, I should just leave it. But him, it is his opinion for the younger brother to get married. I sold my motorcycle to assist my younger brother to get married. In contradiction to what I had wanted my father to do. It doesn't, I didn't dethrone my father then. So I'm going to use my resources to campaign for the Muslim Muslim ticket. It wasn't what I want. But that's what the father wants. But I will remain in the family to continue to educate the father to understand the importance of justice. But I will leave. To God be the glory, some people will tell you that Lalong wouldn't have collected the, the, the director general of the campaign organization. I tell him, they envy him. How many plateau people have ever been director general of presidential campaign of a ruling party? They don't want you to make names. So, sir, I have another question. I want, uh, I want to do a listener feedback. Yan Shak, N, that's the name. He said, good evening and well done to you, honorable. You have, you have done, done well in three years. Kudos. Sir, Sir what, what do you, do you have, have to say about the Gadassi group? What, what is, is the benefit of that group to, to the plateau politics in the last four months? And lastly, what will be your opinion about the Jai's Bank and the plateau uh, legacy, legacy group? Legacy group, legacy group is not about any candidates. candidates. Mm. It wasn't, it wasn't formed, formed for, for any candidate, candidate and, and it wasn't, wasn't used as a campaign structure for any candidate. candidate. Yeah. It, was it was formed for Governor Lalong. No governor in Plateau from 1999 till date have no political structure. 
we know about choice. We know about redemption and the them redemption and the Dara group and what have you. Every governor have a political platform. What is wrong if La Long say Gaddi? We sit together. There is a need for us to sustain what we have done, to sustain our people, bring people that believe in Governor La Long together. Let's move forward. What is wrong in doing that? Nothing can stop legacy group. They're important. So legacy group have no thing to do with uh, adding value to plateau people, rather protecting the value and the virtues of Governor Simon Larbacola Long and the like minds that believe in him. Even in government, there are people that doesn't believe in legacy group, but to hell, that doesn't mean Lalong should not have a political structure. Everybody should do what he wants to do. But legacy group have come to stay, and it's a political structure that will continue to fight to protect the integrity, the image, and the legacies of Governor Simon Larbacola Long in Plato. No going back on that. It has nothing to do with Dr. Nentau. It has nothing to do with, if you don't want it, go and form your own. But this one, that is the philosophy. And that is the interest. And that is what we seek to achieve. For him to have a political base, a political platform, that even after office, Lalong should not be buried while he is still alive. And every politician will seek to have such structure that will sustain him. On the issue of Jaiziba, uh, MOU, I was educated by the governor and the team yesterday in a stakeholders meeting, and I have said my opinion. My reservation for not talking details about Jais Ban was because I didn't understand the concept of 40 years. I didn't understand what they mean by off taker. I didn't understand the issue of 60 40. Who's benefit from 40 years? That was the first question that I envisaged an answer. Yesterday, and the governor answered. Off taker is a shop owner. Who owned those shops? I didn't understand the role of Jais Bank until yesterday. Jais Bank is just a fund, it's not even the developer. Government brings the developer. Jais Bank gave the money for the development. After developing, is it Jais Bank that distributes this shop? To the, the citizen, citizen. The, answer the answer was no. Yesterday, yesterday the, answer the answer in the stakeholders meeting, the answer, the answer government will put in a committee in place to ensure that shops are distributed. That is one security question. If the answer was no, answers to what I expected yesterday was no. Be rest assured that I will be the first person to tell you as a chairman of legacy group that that will be a bad legacy. Don't start it. I'm not part of it. Then, then what is 40 years? years? Do you, you do 40, 40 years in the hand, donating the fetch of that market in the hands of the bank? bank? They, they said no. After, after developing, Jain Bank hand over to government to distribute. And I warn government, if you will do that market in the course of distributing, make sure plateau people take ownership of the distribution. And if the market is going to be done by, by a developer, funded by Jais Bank, distributed to plateau people at the end of the day, I am one of the people that say 40 years is too small. Because if you build the market and give you, give Mupun, give Gas, give Ja, give Bukum, give Birom, give Anabuta, give Afizere, they all have market. They buy for four and they are the owners for the next 40 years. It means the 40 years that people think is too much is for the betterment of the shop owners. And who are the shop owners? Plateau people. It can only be disastrous if government did not allow plateau people to take over ownership of those shops. Now I'm coming. Now, these are the things. But we notice a lacuna. Was the process, the market insured? There was no insurance. If the market that was born was insured, the insurance company would have built the market. So why are you going into partnership without ensuring that that market is insured? The first thing to do is the security of the market by ensuring the process. Those things, and we agree that consultation should be ongoing. After all, the market does not belong to Josno, Josau, uh, Jarawa, Bogom, Jarimkanam, Ngas, Oh, the market belongs to plateau people. 
then the House of Assembly, whose ordinarily by government convenience would have been the representative of the people in this matter, instead of people taking the process as if we don't have a government institution, should go back and consult across 24 constituencies and report back within seven days the views of those constituencies. If majority are satisfied with the technical questions that are being that government are being asked, and they say the market should, the process should continue. I'm disappointed that. The MOU is not even signed, but the discussion going on in the media is as if the MOU is signed, is, it's equally unfortunate that parliament at the federal level that are not supposed to involve, that are supposed to restrict our commitment to exclusive legislative lists are taking government to court for our political convenience at the state level. When you have the state houses of assembly that should suffocate the government to provide answers for what the citizens are crying about. It tells you, it tells you how political, allow them to do it until now, now we are back to the, the thing. We have asked them go back and do it. Allow the people, the legislators, to exercise their, advise them as a federal lawmaker, to exercise their constitutional requirements. But, but don't capitalize, don't capitalize on any little thing that there is a public contestation about it to make your political relevant. It is very unfortunate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, well, this is about an hour of interview. Fruitful, I, I believe. And I, I just want to say this. Uh, members of the House of Representatives should be open like Honorable Gandhi. We will give you an open commendation. Thank you. So about I met him almost they are about, they agreed to do, and I know your engagement with the other radio stations within the week. I think if you don't say, we will not know. Thank you, Thank you very much. From viewpoint crew here, uh, my technical crew, uh, all of us are saying thank you for your Thank you, you very much. And we are going to open our doors anytime you want to uh, open. Thank you. So, and for the viewer, continue to follow us. This is Viewer TV, uh, the Viewpoint Nigeria uh, live. Thank you very much. My name is Dakom Longu, and it's a pleasure doing this. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you. Thank you. This is where we come from.